basically to tell us what the, the film is about? Uh, it's about this, uh, this guy called um, Mark e. T. Woods, um, uh, who basically um, finds out that his father uh, has died. He's a really successful lawyer in Atlanta, uh, really successful. And at the moment, he's trying a case that kind of uh, has black plaintiffs, and uh, his white kind of client sort of, you know, sort of says to him, have you got a problem, you know, with this? And he's saying, what, just because my, you know, just because the plaintiffs are black, he goes, no, because your money's, your money's uh, green, my friend. Ching, ching. And so he's got his money, and he gets a call saying that his father has died. Packs up his family in a plane, and they fly back to uh, Appalachia, where he's from, where he ran away from. And uh, he goes for his father's funeral. But um, they uh, fly into a, into a, just into a storm, and their plane goes down, and uh, and he wakes up, and uh, he's not in a good place. And that's kind of what it's about. That's the plot, anyway. But what it's about in terms of themes is uh, is a lot more intricate. It's about you know rage. It's about um, urban versus ruralization. Uh, it's about house negro versus field negro. It's about uh, it's about belief. Uh, it's about the secular nature of, of violence. Um, so for me, you know, that's always a loaded question. You know, uh, it's, it's what's the plot and it's what's it about, the very different things. <laughs> so in a, in a way, some of those things you mentioned now is a lot of what's going on in the world now. So basically it's it's a pretty good time for a movie like this then. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I hope so. You know, I, I'm always very, very worried that we live in this kind of era where everything is kind of spoon-fed to us, you know? You want food? You just you know click a click a click a, click a button and food comes. You know you want to be famous? Well, you know get on, you know you know you just be famous overnight. Everything's kind of like people have stopped seeing. And, and so my big worry with with a lot of what's happening in films is that you know sometimes subtext people don't kind of understand or don't want to understand it. You know or can't be bothered. So I am hoping that people do sort of look at it and go, oh okay, this is a really cool film and it's fun and it's scary. Ah, oh, but I see what they're saying here. They're saying this, this, this. And, if we can pull that off, you know, if we can entertain first, which is really important, you go entertain first, and then, you know, throw in a little bit of medicine in there, then we've done a good thing, you know, and, you know, and I think very much the main kind of theme of the film is kind of like about rage and how, you know, our central character uh, never, ever loses his temper and, you know, he's trying to bring up his son to be the same way, you know, and he says a lie at the dinner table because that's what they expect from us, you know, and it's a big, big lie. And, uh, you know, I don't want to spoil it for your audience, but by the, by the end of the film, he kind of, he kind of, uh, you know, um, you know, well, I don't want to spoil it, so I'll leave it there. You, you, you see his journey, he, he goes through. Yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly. And I think, I think, you know, I think if you're, if you're, if you're black, a lot of us recognize that. A lot of us recognize this kind of, how we're sort of in constant fight or flight mode, you know, and we dip in and out of that rage to survive. And so, you know, it's 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 a, it's an important point. You know, especially like you just said, with what's going on in the world right now. You know, um, so that's that's kind of what it's about. And is that is that something when when you saw the script that that kind of drew you and wanted you want it made you want to direct the film? Yeah, I mean, you know, when I when I, when I got the script, there's, there's, a, there's a again a bit like the one about you know what's it about? It's sort of a triple, <laughs> as a triple sort of a triple sort of layered answer. You know, um, I I made my last one in 2010. And my last film opened at number one, you know, made 66 million, had Jennifer Lawrence in it. But I couldn't get a job, you know. Uh, I used to go to TV. Um, and I, I realized what that was. It was about opportunity. I just didn't get any opportunities to direct films. Um, and for a number of reasons. Um, you know, the obvious one is, you know, it's like I said, you know, Hollywood kind of hires people that look like them. And that's what they've done, you know. And that's, that's kind of how the way they've been. Like, I don't sort of because in that, you know, they, 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 they feel like they can get this product from that person, so they're going to go with that person. So that's what they do. Um, and so I realized very much that, you know, if I was going to do another film, it had to do one of three things. Number one, it had to have distribution, because anybody can make a film, but you've got to get it out to the cinemas, which means a studio film. Uh, and then it's like a double-edged sword, right? You know, because it has to be a studio film that comes in at a budget that I'm good for. So they're not going to hire me to make a fifty million dollar film. They're not. They're going to get the sort of you know, the kind of you know, the, the, the hippest kid from commercials to do that, or from music videos or some crap. So it had to come in at the right level, you know. So and then thirdly, it had to be um, a good, a good, a script that sort of thematically spoke to me. Um, and and fourthly, it's kind of 
it had to it had to um it had to have a black perspective on it because the truth of the matter is you know then I knew that I had a fifty fifty chance of getting it. You know, I honestly, I said to people, I, you know, if this had been a film about white people, I don't know if I would have got it. Do you know what I mean? And that's the real truth. You know? um, and I'm not, you know, being angry or, or being, you know, um, or being, or being um, you know, uh, um, what's the word, uh, controversial. You know, that's the truth, you know, and uh, and that's how it is. And, I'm, and I hope it changes and I hope they start to give us films that aren't just black films. But, you know, at the moment, a lot of us, it's the only way that we can get in, you know, uh, especially the serious of the is by is by is by doing the films that uh, that need black voices, you know. So, you know, it's uh, it's and it's and it's not the same just for me. I mean, you know, if you speak to Loretta, Miss Loretta, or if you speak to Omari, it's the same for them. I mean, you know, they've never played parts like this, right? Uh, Omari's in his forties, Miss Loretta's in her sixties, and they've never had the opportunity to play parts like this, right? You know what I mean? And so it's the same for them, you know. And we've we've you know we we've, we've all waited for this, and and you know, and so you know, there was there, that was that was why. Um, I chose it, and, you know, um, or that's why he chose me, rather. <laughs> it, well, you kind of opened the door to a couple of the questions that I had, and I guess I'll jump to one of them. And, and yeah. because of the times we're in, and you kind of just mentioned, you know, you wanted this to be on the big screen, but I imagine this is going to be more limited than if we were in normal times. And I've spoken recently to several filmmakers, and each of them kind of has a different perspective on it. it and... Maybe it's a little, is it a little disappointing that maybe it's going to be shown in less theaters than maybe you originally thought when you were signed on? Or I know it's not your fault, but, you know, it is where we are at right now. Uh, you, you know, look, if I'm really honest with you, and I really mean this, you know, this is a bad time for everybody, you know, and there's a lot of people out there that are really struggling. You know, there's people that, you know, have lost loved ones and haven't had to say goodbye to them. So, you know, you know, my film not coming out, I don't, it's not that big a deal, if I'm honest with you. You know, it's, you know, that's, you know, for me, I have a real sense of perspective about what I do. Um, and so, you know, for me, I, you know, I, I, I made this film and, you know, to a certain extent, you know, every time you, you make a film, you get through one hurdle, right? You find the money, thank God. Okay, then you then you find the right actor, oh my God, thank God. And then you cut it and you edit it and you've got a really good film, oh my God, thank God. And then how much money are they going to put into this? So every, every journey, uh, every, every, so every station on the journey is always, is always a hurdle, you know? And, uh, you know, and, and, you know, so sure enough, you know, uh, I always knew, I always knew one was going to come and it came in a way that I didn't even imagine. But, you know, uh, I was like, okay. Uh, here we go. So, what will happen? Right, we'll either sell it to Netflix or we'll sell it to Amazon, and then we'll come out, you know, on, on their platforms. Or maybe maybe we'll you know we'll, we'll, we'll go for OG or you know maybe for limited release, and that's kind of what happens. So, I, I'm sort of I'm sort of you know I've got a real sense of perspective about it. You know, it's 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 good that it's getting a release. Uh, stories are important, but you know, uh, there's a lot of other things in the world right now that are kind of more important. Uh, definitely, like I said. Uh, Different filmmakers have taken it in different different ways when I asked them. So it's always it's always good to see a different perspective from from everybody. Um, yeah. Kind of jumping back, then you, you mentioned some of the cast members that you had in it. Uh, talk about you getting them to um, on board and and what was it like directing them? You know, um, they you know, we, you, know, we, you know I we always wanted Amari. I felt very much that you know the world had never seen him sort of do. Do what he does in the film and the journey that he makes in the film. Um, Miss Moran was a was a was a was a difficult one um, because you know she plays you know very sweet matriarchal kind of grandmothers you know so I couldn't find anything that showed her you know being 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 mean basically and then one day I was watching the show on Netflix called Family Affair and there's a scene she was in where she was you know really angry with her granddaughter and there it was and so I taped it on my on my iPhone I sent it to the studio and I said look 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 at this. And they were like, oh my God, that's brilliant. And so, so then we had our two, you know, we had our two sort of leads and we had, you know, a really strong leads at that. And, you know, and then as we directed them, you know, you know, they're so good, both of them, you know, they're so good in their own ways, you know, they do different things, but they're, you know, they're so, so consummate and they're such brilliant actors that, you know, if I'm honest with you, I always think, you know, directors don't really direct, they kind of just adjust, you know what I mean? Uh, really good actors make really good choices and, uh, and you know, and you've got to trust those choices. And they really do, you know. And so, for me, all of their choices they made, you know, in Loretta's case, they kind of, they kind of, you haven't seen it yet, but she has this kind of like, you know, rat tat tat sing along sort of poetic sort of lyricism to the way that she talks. 
And then sometimes she's really condescending, you know. And then other times she's really sharp, like a snake, like a viper. And so, you know, and whereas Amari kind of, you know, um, that, and they, put, they get into this game of sort of cat and mouse where, you know, the other one knows that he's lying and she knows that he's that she's lying. And that it's like, it all becomes this kind of like, you know, this kind of game, this kind of very sort of like uh, psychological game between the two. Um, that sort of revolves around, you know, hoodoo and the space of hoodoo. And for me, you know, my mum's from Zimbabwe and she believes in a thing called Juju and she, you know, she, you know, they have a manga, which is the witch doctor. And it's just like root work. It's kind of a cousin of root work and, and hoodoo. So I wanted to be very respectful to, to the practice. I wanted to be very respectful to the people that practice it, you know, that exist now. And, and I really wanted to kind of like, you know, um, you know, not, you know, not laugh at it, not ridicule it, you know, but just sort of show this different perspective. And crucially, you know, you know, say that it's not evil, you know, because it isn't an evil practice. It's all about the person who's, who's doing the practitioner, you know, the practitioner. It's, it's, it's their intent, you know. And in this case, Eloise, who's, who's the kind of matriarch of the Mrs. Loretta plays, she believes, she believes in what she's doing. She believes that actually what she's doing is helping her community. That's really where she's coming from. You know, and all the things she believes in, you know, no social media, no, no mobile phones, you know, uh, you know, naturalism, you know, herbs, you know, community, are all things ironically that I agree with. You know, so, you know, it's kind of like, it's kind of like a Mark, who's, who's a Mari character, believes in money, clothes, you know, uh, things, you know, um, you know, and, you know, and, you know, uh, paleo diets. You know, it's like, that's what he believes in, you know, and all these things that, and he realizes that when he's in a situation, none of those things matter, you know. Uh huh. Absolutely. Well, you know, um, admittedly, I'm not as familiar with Omari, but Loretta, um, I've seen her in other things, and she is definitely a, a very good actress. So, um, yeah, she's she's great. When I when I saw her, I was like, it, saw that she was in the film. You know, obviously, you know that was a draw uh, immediately. So I'm I'm sure it was a pleasure to to work with her. Yeah, well, she's such a lovely lady. You know, she really is a really lovely lady. And, you know, we see her on screen, she's so evil. You're going, whoa. <laughs> she's, not evil. she's not evil, that's a stupid thing to say. It's, you know, she's just, she's just someone who makes different choices than you and I, you know? Um, so, yeah. Yeah, she, she's playing her role. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, exactly. You, you kind of touched on it, and, and I guess... I don't know if there's anything else to expand on it, but I've never really heard of hoodoo. And I, I, when I was reading the description of the film, it mentions that. And, and obviously, I'm more familiar with, with voodoo. So, um, yeah. it, it, so it's basically just like a, a some, something like a, a side division of that or, or a different route? Well, or... well, sort of, sort of, you know, yes and no. I mean, it's different from, from, from voodoo, even though the words sound a lot. But, you know, voodoo originated in Haiti and follows the West African, European kind of religious tradition. Whereas voodoo is non-religious and it's a practice with cross-cultural roots, right? So it grew out sort of, uh, out of interactions, you know, between groups like, you know, the Scottish, Irish and Christians who emigrated to the Western North Carolina, the indigenous Cherokee, slave, African cultures and, you know, Dutch. So it's kind of like gumbo, you know, um, uh, Gumbo practice, like many things uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the new world, it has roots in other things, but it's something uniquely American, if you know what I mean, you know. Mm-hmm. And so, for me, that's that just instantly when I when I when I found out that it was this kind of like you know this kind of like amalgamation of different things that always came back to what was readily available: hair, you know, um, you know, spit, uh, you know, hooch, fingernails. Uh, and all those sorts of things. I immediately sort of began to sort of see lots of different other, other sort of like similes between it and me. Uh, you know, I mix and I have a whole mix of blood and blood and blood. And all of, all, a lot of, a lot of us are mixed. You know, a lot of us have got all sorts of blood in us, you know, because of our past. And, you know, the, 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 the one thing that exemplifies that is hip hop. You know, for me, hip hop is this kind of like music form that on paper shouldn't work, but it does. It works beautifully. And it's brave and it's bold and it's unashamedly kind of like takes takes position. But hip hop tips into a little bit of that, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. It does its own thing. And I was like, oh man, you know, it's kind of like what hoodoo does, you know. And it's like so, you know, and it's, and so I was like, man, it's kind of like what, what we are, you know. It's like we kind of, you know, with this and with that, and now we can be anything we want in terms of like, you know, um, influences, and we can take whatever we want. So for me, it became a really sort of like um, an interesting kind of like reflection of kind of like, you know, um, the diaspora, you know? 
Uh-huh. Yeah, honestly, when, when I read, I've never heard of it. So honestly, when I read that, I wasn't sure whether that was something just made for script or a actual real thing. So I didn't, I didn't have time to, to look it up and see, you know, like what was going on there. But uh, I'm, I'm glad to see that, that it, there's actual thing and, and that it wasn't just <laughs> made up for, for the movie. Yeah. Um, yeah, all, of, all, all of that stuff is, is all real. Yeah. Uh, let, let's see. Um, where where did you where did you guys do the filming for this? Uh, I think we filmed in South Africa uh, mainly because uh, when we did the math, um, I only got twenty five days, and I couldn't shoot you know this film in twenty five days. I needed um, thirty five, and so with our exchange rate, um, we got thirty five days. And so yeah, we shot in South Africa, and I've shot there before, so I'm used to it. Um, so I knew what to expect in terms of crews and especially in terms of light you know the light is wonderful up there and you get dust in the air and it's just beautiful yeah it's funny that you say South Africa because I just was talking with a, a, another movie that was done there uh, called Triggered and um, that was filmed over there as well so I was asking them about filming over there as well um, oh really yeah did they enjoy it yeah, they, they did. I guess they, they found a, a nice, I guess, forest kind of area to, to work in. And, and I was telling them how good of a job they did because it looked like a bigger area than that, you know, they shot in than they actually told me that they did. So it was, it was a right. pretty good job on their, their camera crew, I guess. Um, yeah, they're really great person out there. Fantastic. The crew's on. Um, so as far as filming, uh, what were some of the biggest challenges since we were familiar with the area and that wasn't much of a challenge, I guess. But as far as filming, what was the biggest challenges um, of putting this together? Yeah, if I'm honest, it was a mistake that I made. I decided that you know, to help the actors, we were going to do it chronologically. And of course, no one shoots chronologically because it's um, it's exhausting. But also, uh, you've got to sort of like go back of yourself. But it's great for performance because you know you're, you're going from one beat to the next, and you know you kind of elevate. So you know where you are in the story. Um, and that was a mistake, you know, because we had like four weeks or three and a half weeks of nights and I was really um, yeah I was you know we, we, we kind of I know personally I just I just was so tired but during that during those kind of night all night as you know and we had to have long drive and that was a mistake and that's probably the, and that's on me that's on no one else but me um, but you know it was probably the right thing to do for the film um, but that was a real mistake you know sleep deprivation is a torture technique and um, that's kind of that's kind of what happened uh huh and you said you had 20, 25 days to make it, or, or how, how long? 35, 35, 35, 35 days. days. Oh, that's Which awesome. is nothing. I mean, I'm going to show it when I put lock and key, and within 33 days. <laughs> so <laughs> that puts it into perspective, right? Uh-huh. Um, good, good series, though. I, I've, I've, I, watched, I watched that. That is good. Um, okay. You're going to see my, uh, my work. Uh, yes. Yes, no, I've seen a, a couple of things when, when I was looking through... Um, your information. Um, I guess I guess we're, we're getting towards the end here, Sabo. I, I really want, you've given us a lot of information on this, but I just wanted to give you, I guess, one last chance to kind of um, tell the fans, you know, why they should watch this movie, what they should expect. Um, is it something that they're going to be really scared, or they, is more suspense? You know, what can what can they expect um, when they turn on this movie? You know. Uh, uh a friend of mine once said, you know, I never got comfortable in my seat. <laughs> and that's kind of what I think, you know, to expect. You know, once you're in the movie, you're in the movie. You know, it's it's a, it's a very lean movie and that's only, it's only 90 minutes. So it kind of just, you know, once it starts, it's, it's on the tracks and it goes. And it's really suspenseful and really scary. And you're really with him the whole, the whole journey, you know. And it's got some real moments that I promise you, you will, when you turn off, you'll, you'll go, Jesus, do you remember that bit there? <laughs> so it's got these real what the F moments that I, that I think will really pop out. But uh, it's a really great Halloween movie. And it's the sort of movie that, you know, that you can watch uh, with, uh, you know, with your, with your, with your friends, and, you know, and uh, get some of that popcorn in and, you know, and, uh, you know, turn up, the, turn up the sound because the sound, we designed that sound real special for you all. So, you know, turn, turn it up and sit back and just enjoy it. Awesome, awesome. I, I definitely like like movies that have particular scenes that that stick with you. Um, you know, it, whether the movie is is great or just good or whatever, if you can get those scenes to stick in your head, uh, that yeah. that makes it makes it all worth it. Yeah, I 
agree. I agree. So um, I, I, I appreciate your time and, and thank you for, for joining me and answering uh, my questions. And uh, I definitely look forward to, to checking out the movie. Oh, thank you, mate. Thanks for your time, Omar.